settle yourself down in your lovely cozy bed and we'll begin. First, tense up all of your muscles and hold it for a few seconds. Hold it tightly and let go, allowing your arms and legs to go nice and limp. Now breathe in deeply, really filling up your lungs with air. Really fill them up. Now breathe out slowly and gently, releasing all the air from your lungs. Now breathe in again, slowly and deeply. And hold your breath for just a moment. Hold the breath. And breathe out. Draw in another deep breath. Hold the breath. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. And every time you breathe in, you become more and more relaxed. And you can feel your body becoming very loose, very soft. Now imagine you're walking along a beautiful white sandy beach. And the sand is very soft. So you take off your shoes and your socks and you walk on the warm white sand. And you can feel the sand beneath your feet. You can feel it between your toes. Can you feel it? Can you feel the sand flick up against the back of your legs? The beach is wide and long and stretches for miles ahead. And at the far end of the beach, you can see what looks like a lovely wooden cabin. So you walk towards it and go and see. As you walk, you can hear the sounds of the waves. You can hear the sounds of them coming up and onto the sand. You can even smell the ocean spray lovely smell you could only find at the beach. The ocean is a deep brilliant blue colour and it sparkles in the sunshine and it's like the waves are dancing just for you and you could hear that magnificent sound of the ocean waves so much louder now. And you can still hear the waves coming into the shore. You can smell the clean, salty water. You can even smell the sand. And you look out at the ocean. It is the deepest blue you have ever seen. As you reach what you thought was a cabin, you realise that it's actually a beautiful white villa and it's so pretty. It has lovely big glass windows with window boxes filled with lots of colourful flowers. There are butterflies dancing all around the flowers. It has a little wraparound porch with a big swinging chair filled with soft cushions. It looks very inviting. But you decide you want to go inside and see what it's like. So you gently tap on the door, but there's no answer. So you tap again, still no answer. So you decide to go inside anyway. You enter 
into a lovely big room filled with huge cushions. Kind of like bean bags, they are so big. And the room is so bright and inviting. And you realise that all of the cushions are in a big circle. So you walk over to have a look. You give a little gasp at what you see. The reason the cushions are in a big circle is because the lovely little white wooden villa has a glass floor. Very thick glass. The kind that doesn't break when you walk on it. So you take a seat on one of the soft cushions and take a look through the glass floor below you. This is amazing. Wow, you can see the ocean below you. The beautiful turquoise ocean. You can see the water gently moving backwards and forwards as it flows in and out like the waves. You see beautiful, tiny little fish swimming by, all glistening with colour. And the colours are amazing, so vivid and bright. You see bigger fish again with bright, dazzling colours. And they take no notice of you whatsoever. They are just happily swimming along, doing fishy things, you know, like they do. You see an eel smoothly gliding by. And the most amazing thing about this eel, it has a tiny red top hat on. And it kind of looks cool too. It's kind of mesmerising looking through the glass. And you wonder what else is swimming down below you. What other delights are in store? This beautiful blue ocean. So you decide to stay here for a while and just watch the ocean, which is teeming with all kinds of life. You can even see the ocean floor. You can see little crabs scurrying along in the sand. One of them suddenly stops and looks up at you. And it looks like he's kind of smiling at you. Surely not. Crabs don't smile, do they? He lifts up one of his claws, gives you a wave. And then just as suddenly he scurries off again. Oh my, a crab just waved at you. You give a little laugh. As you watch, you notice how kind all of the little creatures are. And they are helping each other to do things. One little fish is helping another little fish to move a rock out of the way. Then you see the eel with the red top hat. He's come along too to help, but he uses his nose and he just pushes. They are all so kind to each other. This is so much fun. You can hear the lapping of the ocean waves in this beautiful tropical paradise. And it sounds so peaceful. And it's so calming and restful being here in this white wooden villa. And you think to yourself, you would like to stay here forever and ever and ever. So settle yourself down on your very big soft cushion. And for a few moments, just watch the undersea world. See what else you can see. See if there are any mysterious creatures that maybe you've never seen before. If you like, you can imagine yourself being under the water with them. You can imagine breathing underwater just like the fish do. Or maybe you prefer just to watch and learn about life under the sea, right where you are on your big, soft beanbag.
you have seen some amazing things in the water below you. I really, really enjoyed being here. But you realise now that you're feeling a bit sleepy. So you snuggle down even deeper on your big, soft cushion. You can still see the little creatures below you. And you can still hear the sound of the ocean waves as they gently begin to lull you into a deep sleep. Your eyes begin to feel heavy and you find that your eyelids are beginning to droop. Oh, but your body feels so peaceful, so relaxed, so calm and so very, very heavy now. You love being here in this beautiful tropical paradise. It's so wonderful. Just before your eyes begin to close, you see once again the little crab scurrying past. And again, he stops. He looks at you and gives you a wave with his claw. And then he scurries off again. And you smile at him and you think how lucky you are. How lucky you are to be in such a beautiful place. And how lucky you are to be able to see how life is under the ocean waves. You have seen how peaceful they live and they all do live so peacefully together. You have seen how they all help each other and how kind they are to each other. And you think that kindness is a very wonderful thing. And you decide that from now on, you are going to be kind to everyone. So you close your eyes and just listen to the sounds of the ocean. And you can feel your breathing as it begins to slow down. You feel your chest is just rising and falling very gently. You listen to the rhythm of the waves as they gently begin to lull you into a beautiful and restful sleep. Just listen to the waves as you go deeper and deeper into sleep, feeling so peaceful, so calm, so relaxed. And when you wake up in the morning, you will feel so refreshed and so very, very happy. And you can always visit the little white wooden villa any time you want. that you are on the most beautiful beach in the world with glorious white sand and you can see trees on this beach but they're further back different kinds of trees and there's no one else there just you you take off your shoes and your socks and you walk along the sand and it feels nice and warm and you can feel the sand beneath your toes you look ahead and you see a small clump of trees, like palm trees. And you see a few rocks and you think to yourself, I think I'll just go and have a sit down and look. Just look around me, see what I can see. You see the odd bird flying past. You see a few beautiful white fluffy clouds in the sky. And you do see the most beautiful deep blue ocean. And you can hear the sounds of the waves as they come gently to the shore. And as you get nearer to this 
a little clump of trees with a few big rocks. You wonder where those rocks came from because there are no other rocks on the beach, none at all. Just beautiful white sand. You reach the little clump of trees and you decide to sit on one of the big rocks. It's a shiny rock with a few little dents in it. And as you look at it, it has iridescent colours in it. Blues, pinks, purples. You think, my, that is a pretty rock. You touch the rock and it feels very smooth. And it's rather shiny for a rock, but you think, hey ho, I'll sit on it anyway. So you sit yourself down and you think, oh, it's nice and warm. And you think, is it moving? Oh, don't be silly, it's not moving. And then you hear a voice go, Oi, get off my back. You jump off the rock and you think, who said that? And you look down as this rock really does move this time. And a little head pops out, a little head with an orange hat. You are absolutely flabbergasted. Is this rock alive? Hmm. Well, actually, no, it's not actually a rock. It's a huge turtle. And this turtle with the orange hat is looking directly at you. And you go, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to sit on you. I, I thought you were a rock. I, 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 oh, I, I'm so, so sorry. And the turtle laughs. And the turtle says, OK, I'll let you off then. It's a female turtle. And she looks at you and she says, My name's Tessie. What's yours? So you tell her your name. You ask her why she's just sitting there, just doing nothing. And she tells you with a little sad look on her face, Well, do you see these vines on this tree? You say, Hmm, yeah, I didn't notice them before, but yeah. Well, I've got one of my feet stuck in it and I can't get out. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried to bite it, but it won't come off. Oh dear. You say, well, I can help. So you kneel down in the warm sand. And you dig a little bit because a foot's gone into the sand completely. And you see that the vine has wrapped itself around her lovely little foot. And she really can't move. So very gently, you lift her foot and you unwrap the vine from it. And as you look at her foot, notice that she's got little tiny nails and they're painted orange. She has orange toenails, just like a hat. And you smile to yourself because you think it looks really rather pretty. You untangle Tessie completely and she stretches her leg and she goes, oh, that feels so much better. I can move again. And she says to you, thank you for being so kind to me, even though you did sit on me. And you laugh a little bit and you think, oh, she's really nice. Tessie looks at you and she says, would you like a ride on my back? I'm big and I'm strong because I really am a big turtle. And you say, yes, please. Come on then, she says. So you climb up on her back and she lifts herself up to a full height. She really is quite big. And you sit astride her as she slowly moves. But she can't go very fast because, you know, after all, she is a turtle. And you wobble a bit, but you keep hold. You keep hold of her shell. And it wobbles from side to side as she lumbers along the sand. And it's amazing. This beautiful creature is letting you ride on her back all because you were so kind to her and you feel good because you were kind to her because you know that it's always good to be kind always Tessie the turtle reaches the water and she starts to walk in it and walk in it and walk in it and gets deeper and you feel your feet dangling in the water and she turns to you and she says what do you like to go for a swim with me. I'll keep you safe. I'll keep you safe on my back as long as you keep tight hold. You think, you think, mm, 
Yeah, yeah, why not? I can do that. So Tessie moves further and deeper into the water. And then she begins to swim. And it is amazing to you. You are sitting on the back of a turtle in the biggest, deepest blue ocean you've ever seen. And it's not as wobbly now because she's not lumbering on the beach. It's like you're floating. Because you can't see her legs, which are swimming really quickly underneath her. But you can't see that. It's just like you're floating on a giant rock. A giant rock with a head, with an orange hat. The sun is shining and it's lovely and warm as Tessie heads further out. And it's so beautiful, so, so beautiful. And the waves are gentle, they're very, it's almost still, but just little, little tiny gentle waves. And as she swims further out, you look around and you can see a very large ship in the distance. It's so far away it looks tiny, but you know it's a really big ship. And you turn to look somewhere else and there's a smaller ship. So you think, well, is it a smaller ship or is it just because it's even further away? You don't really know. Tessie keeps swimming and as she does, she begins to chat. She tells you she's 104 years old. Oh my goodness me, 104 years old. Does anybody ever live to be 104 years old? Tessie smiles, she says, I do, I'm 104 years old. And you turn to look behind you and as you do, you realize you are very, very far out to sea. The shore that you are on, the lovely golden white sand, is so tiny now, but you're not afraid. You're really enjoying this and you know that Tessie will keep you safe. You turn back as Tessie chatters away, telling you about her life, about her family, how many children she's got. And she's got lots and lots and lots of children. You look ahead of you again and you see a whale. This huge, huge, enormous whale. And you see its tail come out of the water and go back down with a big splash. And you think, oof, that's a bit big. Oh, maybe we shouldn't get too close to that. And you say this to Tessie, but Tessie says, okay, that's Bert, my friend. Bert the whale. Hmm, odd name for a whale. So she swims close, right up to Bert. And Bert's eye is probably about the size of your head. You think, wow, Bert can talk too. He says, Hello, Tessie. What are you doing today? Where are you going? And who's that on your back? This is my friend who helped me by untangling my foot. So I'm giving this beautiful little human a ride on my back. You really are a kind person. Okay, Tessie, I'm off. I've got things to do, I'm busy today. And with a great big splash, dives into the water and you get drenched. But you laugh, you don't fall off Tessie's back. And the water goes everywhere, you can even taste it, it's salty. You and Tessie just laugh. And then Tessie asks you, would you like to see where I live? And you say to yourself, well, um, yes. But do you live on, well, do you live on the beach? Tessie says, no. I live beneath the water. Oh, um, well, I, I can't breathe underwater, you say. I, 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 I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. And with a quick flip of one of her feet, she throws a little, well, it's kind of a mask, really. You've no idea where she's got this from. But she gives it to you, you catch it, she says, just put that on, on your face, you'll be absolutely fine. You'll be able to breathe, no problem at all. And with that, she just dives completely under the water. You barely have time to get your mask on, but you manage it. As you look around, you are amazed. You are beneath the ocean, and it's actually quite light and quite bright there. 
There are fish swimming past, lots and lots of fish. They all nod to Tessie as they go past. They're all different colours, different varieties, striped ones, spotty ones, beautiful, bright blue ones. You've no idea what they're called. And Tessie continues to swim. She goes down and down and down. But she doesn't go too deep. Because what you see coming towards you is a lot of coral. And behind that coral, brightly coloured coral, is what looks like a, a little cave. Tessie takes you into that cave. And when you get inside that cave, it's all lit up with sparkling lights, sparkling, shining crystals. And there are other turtles in there, lots of them. And Tessie said to you, This is my family. And all these turtles are my children. And there are hundreds of them. This is a very large cave. So for a few moments, you can swim around with Tessie and meet Tessie's children and find out what they do. Find out if they actually all live together there or do they have their own caves? Ask them. Maybe when you've met all of Tessie's children, you could see if there are other caves because there are lots of other caves. You wonder what might be in those other caves. Maybe you could swim around the ocean with Tessie, meet her friends, meet other sea creatures. Maybe you can find birds, the whale again. You can do anything you like here. And you can do it all with Tessie. She will show you exactly where she lives. And if you like, you could call it a village. It's not a village as you know it, but it's her village, it's her town, it's her city. You can do anything you want. You might even find out that maybe they've got a fun fair too. Oh, wouldn't that be good? Hmm, maybe you could have an ice cream. Can you imagine having an ice cream underwater? Do you think it'd melt? Go with Tessie and find out.
Now it's time for Tessie to take you back to the shore. You've had a wonderful time meeting her family and her friends. But it's really time you came back now. So you make sure you're back on Tessie's back and she begins to swim. But she swims very quickly and in no time at all, you're back. Tessie has arrived back on the sandy shore. You climb off her back and you wonder what you're going to do now because you're feeling a bit sleepy now because you've had a very exciting day. So Tessie says, tell you what, let you and I have a little sleep under this clump of trees. If I snuggle down, you can lean up against me and pretend I'm your pillow. And you think to yourself, that is a really good idea because your eyes are beginning to close. You get more tired by the second. So Tessie lays herself down, tucks in her feet, and all you can see is part of her little head and her bright orange hat sticking out. And you stretch out beside her and lay your back on her enormous shell. And she's really quite comfortable. You put your head back and you close your eyes. And Tessie says, Wow, what a lovely day we've had together. I really enjoyed meeting you. And I want to regard you as my very, very special friend. You've been so kind to me. And you know, if ever you come here again, I can always take you on my back again and we can always go and visit my family and my friends. And you mumble to yourself, that would be so nice because you're so sleepy now, so, so tired. But you know that when you wake up, you will be back in your very own bed, in your very own room, with the most wonderful memories of Tessie, the very large turtle. So just sleep, just rest. Good night. Now imagine you are walking towards the ocean, walking through a beautiful tropical forest and you can see the trees around you, very tall, very elegant trees. You can smell the fresh clean air. You can even hear the sounds of all the different animals and birds in this forest. Can you hear them? You can hear the waves up ahead of you. And you can hear the sound of them coming up under the sand on the beach. You can even smell the ocean spray. That lovely smell, you can only find at a beach. Can you smell it? You continue to walk along your path, coming closer to the sea. And as you come to the edge of the trees, you see the brilliant blue colour of the ocean ahead. And you can hear the magnificent sound of the ocean waves. So much louder now. You walk out of the forest and onto a long stretch of glorious white sand the sand is very soft 
So you take off your shoes and your socks and walk through the hot white sand towards the water. You can feel the sand beneath your feet. Feel it between your toes. Can you feel it? The beach is very wide and very long and it stretches for miles ahead. And you can hear the waves going into the shore. And you can smell the clean salt water. You can even smell the sand. And you look again at the ocean and it's the deepest blue that you have ever seen. Now imagine yourself walking towards the water over the fine hot sand and you're feeling a little bit hot and just a little bit sticky too. And as you walk you can see the sparkles of the sunshine dance upon the water's surface like a million tiny stars all shining just for you and it looks so beautiful a wave washes over the sand towards you and you can feel it touch your toes before gently receding as you step forward, more waves wash over your feet and it feels so cool and refreshing and so calming on your feet. So you walk a bit further into the clear, clean water. And you can see the white sand under the water. You can still feel it between your toes. Can you feel it? Squash your toes into the sand. Wriggle them about in the water. You can see a few small fish swim rapidly past you. Flashes of colour as they pass by. And the water is very pleasant, cool, but not cold. You walk a little bit further into the water and you decide you want to take a gentle swim. So enjoy the ocean for a few minutes. Allow yourself to float and drift around in the beautiful deep blue ocean. Just float around with all the little fish and just relax.
now you are feeling very calm and refreshed and you're feeling very peaceful and very, very relaxed. So you walk out of the water and back onto the beach, feeling again the soft sand beneath your feet and your toes. You walk along the water's edge and you feel free of any worries you might have had. They've all gone. All of your problems have been washed away and you only feel very calm and very peaceful and so relaxed. You turn around you see a comfortable lounge chair and a towel just for you. So you go over and you sit there or you lie there on the chair or you may decide to spread the towel on the sand and just relax on the chair or on the towel. Just relaxing and enjoying the sunshine cool, gentle breeze upon your face, the warmth of the sun on your skin, the sound of the waves making you feel ever so peaceful and ever so happy. You just watch the waves as they ebb and flow, backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and you feel calm so calm so relaxed and so very very peaceful so just sit there or lie there for a little while longer enjoying this lovely relaxation been made just for you.
now it's time for you to return back to your normal life. It's time to come back home. Now imagine you're walking on the most glorious sandy beach and it's very soft and very white. You can hear the gentle sound of the waves as they roll on the sandy beach. You can even smell the ocean spray. That lovely smell you can only find at a beach. The ocean is a brilliant deep blue colour. And the sound of the ocean waves is so much louder now. You take off your shoes and your socks and walk through the hot white sand towards the water. And you can feel that sand beneath your feet. You can feel it between your toes. The beach is wide and very long and it stretches for miles ahead. You go over and you step into the water and it covers your ankles and it feels so cool and fresh on your skin. There are large rocks and what seems to look like a cave further along the beach. You think to yourself that maybe you'll explore it later. But for now, you just keep paddling along. When you notice something in the ocean near those rocks, you spot the head of a seal bobbing up and down. And it seems to be very near the cave you just noticed. You decide to go over and take a look. And what you see is a tiny white seal. But it looks like it may be struggling. And you wonder what's wrong. The tiny white seal looks like it's caught in something. So you call out to the little seal and you ask if it's okay. And two huge frightened eyes focus on you and a tiny little voice shouts, Please help me. You rush over and you see that the little seal is caught on an old fishing line and it's tangled around its flippers. So you go straight over and help that little seal break free. The little seal gives you a great big grin and thanks you very much for your help. And he tells you his name. His name is Harp. And Harp is a very tiny white seal. He's so tiny that he could fit into the palm of your hand. And he has the biggest blue eyes you have ever seen. They are so bright and so kind. Harp tells you that he loves going on adventures. He loves going to swim lessons and on boat rides with his family. He says he loves exploring places he's never been before. But sometimes it gets him into trouble. You see, his parents worry about him very much when he doesn't tell them where he's going or even who he is with because they always go places together as a family. They never go anywhere without each other. But sometimes Harp gets so excited about where he wants to go he forgets to tell them and he just swims off. Harp is the baby of his family so he really shouldn't be going anywhere on his own just yet. Just then you hear voices calling and it sounds like they're coming from the cave you wanted to explore. So you and Harp swim over and take a look. Harp recognises the voices. It's his family. It's his mum, his dad and his auntie. And they have been looking everywhere for Harp. They swim over to you both with big smiles on their faces. They are so relieved to have found Harp and that he's okay. They've been worried sick looking for him. And they all chatter all at once. You can't really understand what they're saying. They're all talking together. But they're happy. Harp 
introduces you to his family. The biggest seal comes up to you and Harp says, This is my dad, Blobby. Blobby is the biggest out of the family. He is a beautiful grey colour with majestic black eyes. And Blobby is super chunky seal and very round. Next, Harp introduces you to his mum. Her name is Sweetie. And she is smaller than Blobby. She is a very beautiful white seal with lovely, soft, fluffy fur. And she has the sweetest black eyes. And Harp looks very like his mum. Finally, Harp introduces you to his aunt. And her name is Spot. And Spot is a spotted grey seal with kind and very wise yellow eyes. And she's the longest out of all of them. And Spot is Blobby's sister. Harp tells them how you rescued him and how you untangled him from the net. And they can't thank you enough. They are so happy. And as a reward, they invite you to tea at their house. Blobby, Harp's dad, says, Get on my back. It will be much quicker. You climb up on Blobby's back. It's so comfortable and so soft, but you hang on tight because you know that seals can swim very fast. Blobby says, OK, are we all ready to go? Then let's go. Within seconds, you are going at a great speed. It's fantastic. Water is splashing everywhere and you absolutely love it. The five of you ride off to Harp's home. So enjoy the ride. You arrive at their home and you are amazed that it's actually a boat. You thought that all seals lived under the ocean waves. Well, this family live on an actual boat. They live on a boat that bobs up and down in the sea. How cool is that? This isn't just any old boat though. This boat is shaped like a seal, and it is huge. It even has a flag flying high on the top of the mast, with a picture of a seal on it too. And it's very luxurious. Wow, you have never seen anything like this before. It's wonderful. Sweetie, Harb's mum goes into the kitchen saying that she's going to make a pot of tea now for the adults but for you and Harb there's freshly squeezed orange juice. So while you wait for Sweetie to make the tea you have a little look around the room you are in. There are family photos up everywhere. There is a bookcase overcrowded with books of all kinds. They obviously all like to read here. You even see one of your own favourite stories on one of the shelves. There is a really big log fire burning 
There are big, squishy, comfy chairs and even bigger, squishier sofas. There are lovely vases filled with flowers in all sorts of colours. There is even a tropical fish tank full of brightly coloured fish. And Harp says that they are his pets. He loves fish. They are his friends. You feel so comfy and so warm here. And you think it would be great if you could live on a boat like this. Harp asks you if you would like to see the rest of the boat. He says he will show you his bedroom too. So you set off with Harp and have a good explore of his lovely home. So for a few moments, see what else is there. Find out how many rooms there are on this very big boat that looks like a seal. Just have fun with Harp for a few moments while you wait for your tea. You and Harp now return to the lovely, comfy living room and meet up again with Blobby, Sweetie and Spot. They are all sitting around a small table with your drinks on it and the biggest, fattest chocolate cake you have ever seen. Wow, that's a lot of chocolate. Harp tells you that his mum made it. He says she makes the best cakes in the whole wide world. So you take a bite out of your piece of cake and wholeheartedly agree with him. It is delicious and very chocolatey. The five of you happily eat your chocolate cake and drink your drinks. Harp gives a great big yawn. And then so do you. Sweetie, Harp's mum, asks you if you would like a sleepover with Harp and you can stay in his room with him and you say oh yes please that would be lovely Blobby and Spot say goodnight to both of you and Sweetie takes you and Harp to his bedroom she tucks you both in and then says goodnight 
Then she switches off the light. It's then that an amazing thing happens. There is a big round window in the ceiling of Harp's bedroom that you didn't notice when you went in. And through this window, you can see the moon high up in the sky and lots and lots of stars all gently shining down on your beds. It's like you have your own private show of dancing lights. It's so beautiful and you both watch the stars feeling so peaceful, so calm and so happy. You begin to feel your eyes getting very heavy and a bit sleepy. You can hear the gentle lapping of the waves as they move against the side of the boat. And this makes you feel so safe. You feel your eyes gently close now as you take a deep breath in and let out a long, happy sigh. You have made a very special friend today who has a very special family too. And remember, you can come and visit Harp and his family anytime you want to. You can visit Blobby, Sweetie and Spot too. You take another deep breath in and slowly breathe out. Feeling that your body has already gone to sleep. And you gently close your eyes and drift into the most wonderful sleep. And always remember, you are safe, you are loved, and you are protected, always.